Okay, so I've got the recording started and I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. The time is now 5.03 p.m. on November the 12th. And I would like to call this meeting of the 2020 Redistricting Commission to order. In the interest of public health and safety and pursuant to the governor's executive order in 2920, members of the 2020 Redistricting Commission and staff are participating in this meeting by teleconference in accordance with the executive order, the public may view this meeting online, but not in council chambers. Your comments must be received before I call for the close of the commenting period in order to be considered. After the commenting period is closed, I will announce a brief pause to allow the commissioners time to read comments that have been received. If you have difficulty or you need assistance with the comment during this meeting, please call area code 619-476 2300 and city clerk staff will assist you. And I'll go ahead and call the roll if you would just respond by saying that you are here. Commissioner Andrade. Commissioner Kressler. Present. Commissioner Gosto. I'm here. Commissioner Fortner. Present. Commissioner Hurtado. Here. Commissioner Juan. Here. And Commissioner Moreno. Here. Awesome. So the first item that we have on the agenda is the introduction of our city manager. And I think uh, Anne will have some words for us there. Yes. Good evening, Commissioners. I'm Ann Steinberger, the communications manager for the city. And um, Maria Cachadorian, our city manager, um, is not able to join us, but she wanted me to extend her welcome to all of you and thank you for your commitment to this important effort for the city. So the city manager welcomes you to this effort. Thanks. Thank you, Anne. The next item on the agenda is item two, and that is commissioner and staff introduction. I'll go ahead and start off the introduction and call on our staff individually, and then we'll also do the um, introductions for the commissioners. Uh, we will be um, voting tonight on um, a chair and vice chair, so listen closely to your commissioners here. My name is Tashar, and um, wh who you don't see here tonight is our illustrious city clerk who is out on a family emergency, but I will be taking her place today and helping you guys see this meeting today along with my colleagues. I am Tashar, the assistant city clerk, and um, as I've said before, we are always available for questions. If you don't know the answer, we can find out for you. So please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. I'll go ahead and turn it over to our deputy city attorney, Jill Mayland, to introduce herself. Hi, thank you, Tashar. My name is Jill Malin. I'm the assistant city attorney for Chula Vista. I think I've met most of you through Zoom, through the process that we've gone through already. And I just want to welcome you all to our very first uh, redistricting commission. I look forward to working with you and I'll be serving as legal advisor to staff and, and the commission through this effort. So please feel free to reach out to me in the future if you have any uh, questions. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to Anne. Hello again, Ann Steinberger. I'm still the communications manager, and I believe I shared with the commissioners um, at the previous meeting that I worked um, on the communications effort in 2014 through 16. So it'll be nice to work with you all again, and welcome to the commission. Awesome. And we have one more staff member, member online that she wants to go ahead and introduce herself in here. Hi, I'm Leila Rote. I'm a deputy city clerk here at the city um, clerk's office. If you guys ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to, have, to answer them. Awesome. And I'll just go down the line and say your names, Commissioner, if you guys want to take a moment to give us a brief introduction. Um, Commissioner Fortner. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm Commissioner Fortner, uh, resident of Chula Vista for seven years, active duty military slash veteran. Um, and what else? Uh, grad student at USC right now. I'm very excited to get started. Awesome. 
Commissioner Dostal. Here we go. Hi everyone, Elidia Dostal. I am an attorney. I have been practicing law in San Diego County for the last, um, let's see, 17, 18 years. Um, and I've been a resident of Chula Vista for about the same amount of time, 17 years. Commissioner Hurtado. Good evening, I'm Gloria Hurtado and um, I am currently retired. I left city government about a year and a half ago and I spent about 25 years in local government. My last position was deputy city manager with the city of Santa Rosa in Northern California. And prior to that, I worked as an assistant city manager for San Antonio, Texas. And before that, a uh, department head in Phoenix, Arizona. So I've spent um, all my career in local government but happy to be living in Chula Vista now. Thank you. Commissioner Kressler. Hi everyone, uh, John Kressler. I am resident of Chula Vista for over five years now. I serve as the director of our hospital and sports affiliations for UC San Diego Health. Uh, work there in the physician group um, and manage our um, partnerships and, and contracts that we have with uh, other healthcare entities. I, uh, I'm excited to be a part of this, and uh, when I'm not doing this, you can usually find me in the water or on a bicycle or trying to wrangle my two small children. Commissioner Moreno, glad you could join us on camera. Awesome. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Um, I'm Robert Moreno, um, new to, newly Chula Vista resident within the past year, um, current for a, a nonprofit and uh, been a former reporter for a few years and a former city employee for a few months. So. Awesome. Looks like your camera is a little slow there, but. And lastly, uh, Commissioner Andrade. Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I just want to wish a happy Veterans Day to Commissioner Fortner and to all our other veterans out there. Um, but my name is Stella Andrade. I am currently a community and youth organizer at a public health nonprofit that serves the South Bay. I grew up in Chula Vista my whole life, and I'm a proud Bonita Vista High alum, so go Barons. Um, and I'm excited to get to work with the rest of the, the committee. So, hello. Awesome. So the next item on our agenda is item three. Actually, Tishar, I, I still haven't introduced oh, myself. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah, Warren. yeah, not a problem. Uh, my name is Mike Juan. Uh, I am a clinical psychologist. I work for San Diego State University in counseling psych services, and I teach in the, the Department of Education over our College of Education. Uh, I'm in private practice uh, in San Diego. I grew up in Chula Vista, I uh, moved away after college and came back just a few years ago. So I've been back for about three years and I too am a Bonita Vista Baron alumni. And so go Baron. Awesome, sorry about that. So the next item on our agenda is item three. We have a few staff um, presentation. I'll go ahead and turn the floor over to Jill and she'll, I'm sorry, <laughs> city attorney Malin. And she will go ahead and um, take care of the first three presentations, and then she'll turn it back over to you. Floor is all yours, Jill. Thank you, Tishar. There's a reason I'm an attorney and not an engineer. I'm having trouble figuring out my mute and unmute here, but um, I think I got it. Um, I wanted to go over some of the basics regarding serving on a public commission such as this, um, the Brown Act, the Public Records Act, and the um, and certain ethics laws that govern. Can I just see by a show of hands who, if anyone has served on other um, commissions, boards, agencies, either as elected or appointed? Okay, so a couple of you. So you're probably familiar with these, the others of you will be required, and the city clerk's office may have already reached out to you, but will be required to go through ethics training, it's statutorily required. Um, and we, 
I'm a little bit biased in this, but our city attorney and our city clerk do this and they just did a presentation in October and it's excellent and it's available. Those materials are available to you. Um, so I would recommend that. And there's also some other options um, that I'm sure the clerk will provide to you. So there's a lot more detail than what I'm going to go over tonight, but I wanted to go over some of the, I think, what I think are going to be uh, most important to you to keep in mind throughout this process. So the redistricting commission is um, required to conduct its meetings open and publicly um, as a appointed commission of the legislative body. So what that means is that for all your meetings where you meet as a commission, which is a quorum of four or more of you, uh, we will agendize those. They will be open and noticed to the public. The public will be um, permitted to participate. It's a little bit different these days because they can't attend in public or in person as none of us can right now, but they will be able to participate um, virtually. And you'll see as we go through here, we will stop and allow for a public comment period of a couple of minutes each time before you take action on an item so that you do get the benefit of that public um, input before you make your decisions. And as you go through the meetings, we'll be limited in what you can discuss to whatever was ad agendized. So we will ask staff and we will work with um, the chair once you've determined who that's going to be to develop your agenda. And once that's developed, it'll be published 72 hours in advance, and then that will dictate what the discussion can be. And during the meetings, you may have public comment on items that are not on the agenda. And, and we can take those public comments, listen to them, uh, but we can't go into discussion about them since they're not agendized. So what typically happens is the commission can decide and ask staff to agendize those for a future meeting if they do want to engage in discussion on items that are brought up through public comment. So just keep that in mind as we go through and, and I'll um, try and help you if we have some public comment and it leads to discussion and um, we'll try and keep our arms around not going too far as a field on those. So outside of these publicly noticed meetings, the commission cannot talk about its own, about the commission's business on its own. Um, all of those discussions have to be open and public. Um, and what does that mean? It, it's whenever there's four or more of you, you cannot communicate um, about your commission business. And that can take different forms. It could be you happen to all be together in person, probably unlikely at this time, but um, it could also be through what they call serial commission communication. So, it could be one commissioner talking to another, talking to another, talking to a fourth. So that too would be prohibited under the Brown Act because that would constitute a communication among four or more members. Um, same idea, but, but a little bit different would be what they call the hub and spoke approach, which is one commissioner sending out an email to three others. Now, again, we've got a communication between four or more of you. So those are prohibited as well. Um, there are some exceptions, and you may see communications from staff related to scheduling meetings. That's an exception. So we can have that very limited discussion about when scheduling, when we can schedule a meeting, who's available for what dates and times. If you do get communications like that from staff, I would request that you reply just to the staff member as opposed to reply all, because that can lead inadvertently to um, communications among a quorum of you or more. Um, it can, so it can take the form of emails or other written communications as well as phone calls and um, in-person discussions. So just to keep that in the back of your head, um, back of your mind, I should say. Um, there are other um, exceptions as well that may be um, other open and publicly noticed meetings. So if those come up, if you have questions, if you know that there's going to be four or more of you or you, you think there may be, um, please let us know and we can give you our input on to whether as to whether or not that's acceptable and okay under the Brown Act, because there are some other exceptions. Um, the other area is the Public Records Act. So you may be familiar with that, but the public is I'm entitled to um, access many of our public records, not all, but many. Um, 
So just keep that in mind. And, and a record can be uh, where it may come in into um, play with this commission is it could also extend to email communications that are about districting business. So you might want to keep that in mind. That is an area of law that's still in flex and still being developed and, and cases come down regularly on that. But most recently they have determined that email communications, even on private devices, if they relate to districting or redistricting commission business could be um, subject to public records act, which means that those would have to be turned over. So please keep that in mind. Um, let me see what else do we have here? Um, speaking of social media, it could also extend to um, e uh, texts or posts. So a couple of things to keep in mind there. Um, as you're going through this process and you're serving on this commission, you want to make your decisions openly and publicly after receiving public comments. So where it can get kind of tricky is if you're um, posting information or ideas or discussions that seem to be biased one way or another, or if you're soliciting that information, you want to try and even though you're keeping an open mind and you know you are and you may not have any nefarious purpose in doing so, it can create a public perception. And so what we want is to have an open mind and um, unbiased and not make your decision and not come down on any side until you've had the benefit of all the information that's going to be provided to you from us as well as from the public input. Um, I think we've covered, there's also, um, just as far as ethics go, keep in mind everything that you do in your capacity as commissioner, you want to keep the public's interest foremost in your mind. So you don't want to, you know, go, going back to what we just, what I just talked about with um, potential bias, you want to make sure that you're acting not with anyone else's interest, yours or neighbors or family members, except the public should be top at mind. Um, and if you do feel like you have any sort of conflict um, in making your decision, that's up to you to decide if you think you can make it um, in an unbiased manner. There are also actual financial conflicts that come into play where there's actually a legal prohibition against making decisions where you have a financial interest at stake in it. And that I don't. I don't anticipate that coming into play with this commission. That's typically with the council member who, when the council is deciding whether to enter into a contract or to make a purchase or to make a land use decision where their property may be um, close proximity to that, those can create financial conflicts. So again, I don't, I don't anticipate that here given the nature of the work that you'll be doing, but just keep that in mind and if there's anything that comes to you that you feel like you do have some sort of um, tag on, on your decision making and you think you may have some sort of conflict, um, please reach out to me and I'd be ha help, happy to help you through it and discuss it. Um, we also have the Fair Political Practices Commission, which is the administrative um, entity that helps and provides guidance in this area as well. Um, and I think that generally covers what I wanted to go over. I'm happy to answer any questions or to delve more into any one area if I didn't cover it enough. Um, either now or if you want to reach out to me privately later, I'd be happy to go into more information. Thank you. So seeing no questions, I will go ahead and go on to the last part of this item number three. I'll ask our deputy to go ahead and pull up the roadmap slide for me. Um, the initial four, you guys have um, seen this presentation, but this information will be drilled into you guys over and over again. So this is our roadmap for redistricting. Um, and uh, we wanted to take some time to share this with you. Um, so. Um, the member selection of the first four members uh, took place at the Charter Commission meeting around late October. 
And um, the first redistricting meeting was slated for about October the 20th. We hit the mark pretty good. We had our first meeting on October the 21st, and that is where you all selected the remaining three members. Um, on November 3rd, those remaining three members were ratified at council. And that brings us to where we are now. Um, so between the November 3rd date and sometime in late January, you all will have a series of meetings to set the groundwork for the commission. And that will include choosing consultants um, that the charter provides for the commission. Um, and then around March, we are due, around March 31st, we're due to receive the census report. And you may have heard in recent news that that date is kind of fluctuating with COVID. Um, the dates for the census have changed and the timeline will probably change as we learn more. So this is just kind of a temporary holding state for, for the census report. But in fact, the census report is our next milestone and which will move us into the next part of the process. Now, assuming that we do receive the census uh, um, in March, and if it does come out as planned um, around June, the commission will hold public review meetings and public hearings, and that will give the public the option to weigh in on the potential maps that the commission is considering and provide input based on their neighborhoods. Um, then there are the 30 day review period that um, that plan has to be out there for the public to review, and um, that has to happen before the commission can make any recommendations. Um, potentially in late July, we'll be looking at. Um, the commission recommending this plan to city council and the staff would submit an item to the agenda on your behalf. Um, council would then potentially hold public hearings and approve the final districting plan sometime in August. Um, and then there's the state deadline and that is the deadline for everybody to have their redistricting done. Um, as mentioned, this could also change. Um, recent legislation changed the election to June of 2022. And so, uh, so in non presidential election years, the primary election is held in June, and our city election is consolidated with that. So, that's kind of like our benchmark. And um, June of 2022 will be the first time that we will have an election and, and be newly adopted district. So that is our redistricting roadmap. As I said, this could very well change um, over the next couple of months. We'll, we're watching it closely and we will notify you guys as well. So at this time, do the commissioners have any clarifying questions or anything like that before we go to public comment for this particular item? Right. Commissioner Red question so uh, march 31st is the tentative uh, census report date uh with a census i mean are they just gonna how soon will we know or how you know far in advance like the, the day before the week of whether or not they're gonna have the report out you know jill i don't i don't know if you know the answer to that i don't think we really have an answer we're all getting the information as it comes out and we are watching it very closely so as soon as we know, we would definitely let you guys know. I think that's right, Tishar. And in other prior years, um, it's been a hard and fast deadline, and we've known we're going to get it by then. Um, with this year, they've um, pushed some deadlines out, and then they've pulled back. So there's definitely some potential that that date won't won't hold hard and fast, but. With many, as with many things right now, it's hard to know. So we'll keep you, keep you updated as we know more. Awesome, thank you. So I'll go ahead and um, call for the two minute pause to allow the public to submit any final comments on this item. <clears throat> and I don't see that we have any comments at this particular time on any of the items on the commission, but we'll give it the two minutes and see. Uh,
Okay, um, I still don't see that we've received any comments via e-comment. I did not receive any comments via email. And if there are, any, are there any questions or comments from the commissioner? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on to the next agenda item four, which is selection of the chair and vice chair for this fiscal year 2020-2021. And I'll turn it over to Jill to give you guys a little bit of instruction on that. Thank you, Tushar. So typically we um, elect a chair for each commission that will run the meetings and a vice chair to step in um, in the event the chair isn't available for any one meeting. The chair will work with staff in helping to develop the um, agendas and just any other issues that may come up from an administrative or planning standpoint between meetings. Um, it can be any one of you and it just takes a vote of four to elect the person. And I would suggest starting with the chair and then, and then the vice chair. And as far as this meeting, we are set up so that once the chair is elected, we can turn the meeting over to the chair to run the remainder of the meeting tonight. Or um, since this will be kind of your first um, introduction into everything and you haven't had the benefit of um, having advanced planning for it, we can also have staff continue to run the meetings and then the meeting tonight and then at the next one, the chair would step up. So once the chair is elected, we'll leave that decision up to you. And I'll turn it over now to any um, nominations for the position. Um, this is the little Sorry, I was muted. Um, we need to first ask any clarifying questions. If you have any clarifying questions only for Jill, you can ask those questions now and we'll do that prior to going into another two minute uh, comments and period. Any questions? Just clarifying questions. We will you will have a chance to deliberate after the two minutes. No questions? So we'll go ahead and start the two minute public timer and just after that we'll give you guys a chance to deliberate or make any motions that you might want to The comment period for this item is now closed. I did not show that we received any comments via e-comment, nor did we receive comments via email. So now the floor is open for deliberation and motion. Commissioner Dawson. 
Thank you. Um, given her extensive public experience, I would suggest, I don't want to nominate yet because I first want to see if she's interested, but I would suggest Commissioner Hurtado as the chair. And if you're interested, I can second that if that's the motion. I would be um, happy to do it if that's the nomination. I'd like to nominate, agree with the other two. As would I. In that we case, need a, I, a formal nomination. I'm oh, sorry. In that case, I make a motion uh, to nominate uh, Commissioner Hurtado as the chair. Second. So we have a motion by Commissioner Dosto and a second by Commissioner Moreno for Gloria Hurtado to be the chair. And I'll go ahead and take the roll call vote. Commissioner Andrade? Commissioner Kressler? Yes. Aye. Commissioner Dostal? Yes. Commissioner Fortner? Aye. Commissioner Hurtado? Yes. Commissioner Juan? Aye. And Commissioner Moreno? Yes. And that passes unanimously. And we move on to the selection of the vice Can I, can I ask the question of the group? Oh, sorry. I have a question from Commissioner Hurtado and Commissioner Juan. Commissioner Hurtado? I was going to make a, a nomination, but if you want to take the question first, then I can wait. Okay. Commissioner Juan? Thank you. I just wanted to clarify who has had uh, experience on uh, uh, commissions before. I remember there's a raising of hands. Was it just the two? Uh, uh, Commissioner Hurtado and Commissioner Dostal. By a show of hands, if you guys want to show who has been on a board or commission before. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Hurtado. Yes, I'd like to nominate, uh, if she'll accept, Commissioner Dostal for the vice chair position. Um, yes, I'll accept. A second. I'll second that. I'm, I'm sorry. Third. Was that Commissioner Fortner? Oh, sorry, yeah. Who was the second by? I'm sorry. Yes, that was Commissioner Fortner. So we have a um, motion by Commissioner Hurtado and a second by Commissioner Fortner to move Commissioner Gasco as the vice chair. I'll take the roll call vote. Commissioner Andrade? Commissioner Kressler? Aye. Commissioner Dosto? Yes. Commissioner Fortner? Aye. Commissioner Hurtado? Aye. Commissioner Wong? Aye. And Commissioner Moreno? Aye. And the vote passes unanimously. Um, Commissioner Hurtado, if you're prepared, I can send you the um, the script that we have for for today's meeting, or I can just continue with this meeting and we can um, start you at the next meeting as um, our deputy city attorney. Um, I have the agenda, so you have a more detailed script. Yes, is that what you're saying? Yes, <laughs> we, we do. Um, staff will prepare a script for you guys for every meeting. So. Okay. Um, well, why don't we do that for the next meeting? I'll let you continue. Sounds good. So the next item on the agenda, item six, is approval of the minutes for October the 21st. Um, there is no presentation for this. I take it that we've all had a chance to read the minutes from last from the last meeting, and I'll entertain a motion. Commissioner Hurtado. I move approval of the minutes for October 21st. 
Do you have a second? Second. Commissioner Fortner? Yes. So we have a motion by Commissioner Hurtado and a second by Commissioner Fortner to approve the minutes for October 21st. I will go ahead and take a roll call vote. Commissioner Andrade? Commissioner Pressler? Aye. Commissioner Dasco? Yes. Commissioner Fortner? Aye. Commissioner Hurtado? Yes. Commissioner Wong? Aye. And Commissioner Moreno? Aye. And that passes the matter. The next item on the agenda is item six, is consideration of resolution setting the regular meeting time and place. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to Deputy City Attorney Malin to explain the process. Thank you, Tushar. This would be an action to set the regular meeting time and place. Um, the commissions typically meet once a month uh, on a regular basis. And the point of a regular meeting is to allow the public notice by virtue of a schedule to know that the commission will regularly meet at that day and time and location. Now, your commission is a little bit unique because you're for a limited duration and you probably will be meeting um, more frequently than that at times when we get uh, thick into the process of having uh, multiple public outreach meetings and that. But for this, um, purpose and at this time, the uh, point of this action would be to just set that regular monthly schedule. So, whatever um, time, day of the week that works best for the commission um, on a go forward basis. And again, I would recommend once a month for now. Okay. Um, I'd like to, uh, I guess, suggest meeting on. I guess Thursdays, like today, um, I think those that would be work well. For me, it would be uh, Wednesday or Thursday would work well. Um, for preferences on Wednesday, but Thursday works. Okay, I, uh, I could do Wednesday too. Unfortunately, I can't do Wednesdays, but Tuesdays or Thursdays. So Thursdays so far sound like <laughs> that would work yeah. for me. I prefer Thursdays also. Thursdays work for me as well. Uh, Thursdays work for me as well. And I can do any day since I've retired. <laughs> Does anyone have a preference as far as whether it's first, second, third? I'm indifferent. No, oh, yeah, I'm indifferent as well. And I think yes. Commissioners, I um, help staff the Human Relations Commission. We meet the fourth Thursday of every month. So, awesome. Well, I guess I'll throw out uh, the third Thursday of the month. Does that work? Any objection to that? That works, I think. All right, then I guess I'll move to set it for the third Thursday of the month. It sounds like five o'clock works for everyone, the same time as today's meeting. All right, so I'll suggest uh, I'll move for thurs third Thursday, five o'clock. I'll second that. So, I'm part two. Oh, I just was going to say we should do public comment on this one. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually, we skipped it for the last one. So I'm just going to go ahead and put public comment up. I'm going to ask our deputy to put the comment up for three minutes. If there are any public out there, I don't see anybody attending, but if there are any public out there that would like to uh, comment on the last like, item in this item, we'll take three minutes.
So sure, while we wait, is there a chat function within the WebEx meeting? No, the, the chat function is disabled so that we don't um, violate any Brown Act laws. Mm. Is that you, uh, Commissioner Kressler? I just responded yes. to your email. Ah. Okay, so the commenting period has ended. Um, there are no comments on e-comment, no comments on email either. So now we can entertain motion for item six. Before um, we take up the, the motion, I had another just a comment, maybe to further deliberation really quick. Can we do that? Sure. I think the motion was for five o'clock on Thursdays. Um, I would have maybe like to suggest or recommend that we possibly do uh, if it works in everybody's schedule uh, 530 uh, because I'm just trying to think from the public's perspective, you know, um, hopefully things will get better with the, you know, the pandemic and everything and people get off at work at five o'clock, you know, they have some time to you know, hopefully attend our, our meetings, whether, you know, virtually or, or physically. And uh, also, I think reading the, uh, the the board's uh, commission report last year, um, I think they had to adjust the time from five to to six because of public participation. So I would just consider maybe we should consider maybe 5.30, be halfway between five and six if, if it's in your time frame. What's your name? Pardon me? Well, I just said I have no objection. That works for me. Yeah, I think that. Um, so we're going to hear what everybody else thinks. Commissioner Yeah, can you can you say a little bit more about the that board report that had the uh, move or the the board that had moved to six o'clock? I, I just barely. Oh yeah, sorry. About. Yeah, I think it was the com the commissioner's report from last um, what, four years ago. You know, they they drafted that report, and I believe if I read it correctly, from it's been a while since I read it. They had to move the time from five to to six because of I guess uh, lack of participation from the public or something like that. Um, so I that's what I said. Maybe five thirty. So when you know things get better hopefully with the pandemic and people get off at work at five they have some time to attend the meet to get to the meeting whether it's in person or virtually and um you know just to keep them in, in mind as well does staff have any input about uh 5 30 versus 6. Uh, i would just say that most of our commission meetings are at six o'clock and i believe that is the reason um we have some that start at five fifteen but most of them do start after five, just from my knowledge. And Sorry, I would just say too that um, when we get into the outreach part of it as well, we'll have, we did adjust the times of the meetings as well. We had some on um, weekends, um, even one on a Friday night, if you can believe that, it was quite crowded. So. Um, so the public meetings too, we can also address um, the, the best timing for that. I just wanted to remind commissioners of that. Okay, well, yeah, so then well, maybe you can just do, I guess, five o'clock, I guess, for, for now, and then maybe as we get more into the public part, five, uh, 5.30, I don't, I don't know, or should we just stay at one time consistently, or? Looks like our city attorney has something. Thank you, Tishar. Yes, a couple points. Um, from a staff perspective, I think we can support either of those times, 5, 5.30. 
or six, um, however the commission decides. And we will, as we go through and start having those outreach meetings, those are what are called special meetings. So we can decide the timing and days and locations of those independent of this regular meeting schedule that you're um, discussing right now. And then with respect to the port, the report, and um, that was a report that was prepared by the prior commission and you will be receiving um, a copy of that so that you can get the pen benefit of their input from their experience the last go around. Okay, I guess I'd, uh, I don't know, just have a motion on the floor, but um, I'd like to make a motion for 5.30 on Thursdays. Or the I would second, I would second that. And we would need to choose a Thursday as well. Did we say which Thursday? I believe Commissioner Moreno did say third Thursday. And did we get a second? I I second it. So we've got a motion by Commissioner Moreno and a second by Commissioner Juan to choose the third Thursday at 5.30 p.m. for your regular meeting. I'll go ahead and do a roll call vote. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Andrade? Yes. Commissioner Kressler? Yes. Commissioner Dosto? Yes. Commissioner Fortner? Yes. Commissioner Hurtado? Yes. Commissioner Juan? Aye. And Commissioner Moreno? Yes. And that passes unanimously. The next item on the agenda, item seven, is the report on a request for proposals for a demographer and the discussion regarding the selection process. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to Anne. For this item? Yes. Hello again, commissioners. Um, our colleague Christina Hernandez took the lead on this project, but um, or this effort, and will be working with us on, on this going forward. But we wanted to let you know that we did issue the RFP. We posted the RFP, um, and it was open for three weeks. It just closed, and we received three bids. The um, so we use a um, online platform, Planet Bids. Some of you may be familiar with it, where people can sign up to get RFPs on um, um, topics or things that they're interested in in um, bidding on. So we have um, people on that list as well. We reached out to um, um, known demographers that we're familiar with, and then other organizations that also um, work on uh, districting and. And events um, of this nature or issues of this nature, for example, um, the Rose Institute of State and Local Government, um, Lapkoff and Gobelet Demographic Research, even ESRI, ESRI, which I forget what that stands for, but it's the um, I don't it's the big GIS platform. If someone wants to help me out there, you're welcome to do that. So um, we did reach out and um, post to our list. So we are reviewing uh, internally that goes through our purchasing department, the three bids. And the next process will be internally, we'll evaluate those and then we'll present them to the commissioner at the next meeting with input on what our next steps are. Um, last time we did bring the, um, the top contenders in for um, interviews, public interviews with the commission. And then um, the commission will make a recommendation that will be presented to council and council will make the final uh, determination of um, to issue the agreement. So that um, is that process that's underway. Um, and then Tishar and Jill, did you want me to address the outreach RFP at this time or later on in staff comments? Staff comments. Okay. So I'm happy to answer any questions on the demographer RFP. So right now it's just clarifying questions because we will have a two minute uh, public timer for this okay. item as well. Uh, Chair Urtado? Yes, yeah, so I just want to um, make sure I, I've gone through this process before and I know how critical the demographer is. So I think it's going to be really important that the commission have the opportunity, you know, not only to 
meet them and interview them, but to have a presentation, to also get a demonstration on their software, what they would be using, how available it would be for the public to submit their maps. So um, I see that might take some time. So we might wanna think about how the timing would be on that meeting. But um, I think that's a really critical part of this whole process. So just wanted to get that on the record. Yes, thank you. And what uh, another thing that staff discussed as well was um, when we did this in 2014 to 2016, that was mid, you know, between census uh, efforts. And but now everybody's redistricting in the state of California. So hopefully we've got a bit of a jump on it. So our, the demographers are going to be in high demand and, and very busy. So thank you, Commissioner, for the, that input. Agreed. So I will now call for the two minute pause to allow public to submit any comments on this item. Okay, the comments and period for this item is now closed. I did not receive any comments via email or via e comments. Um, do the commissioners have any questions or comments? Awesome. We'll go ahead and move along to the last item. And just uh, for the record, uh, Commissioner Kressler does have a hard stop to hit six and we'll be logging off, but um, just wanted to make sure you guys knew that. We'll move on to the last item for tonight, which is item eight is consideration of the next steps in the redistricting process. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to our deputy city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Tishar. We've generally covered, I think, with Tishar's roadmap where we're going from here, and we've laid out and tried to do it. Um, as best we can right now, given some uncertainties that we're expecting along the way with the release of the census information. But to the extent we can wrangle it and stick to that schedule, that is our roadmap and our plan that we wanted to share with you. Um, as um, Anne has just described, we're in the process of um, receiving our RFP, so we expect that will be the next item that will come back to you at the next meeting in December. So. Looks like the third Thursday is December 17th. So we will plan on having that information for you then for consideration, I believe, unless Anne, you want to weigh in if I've got my timing off on that, but I think we'll be prepared by then. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, we'll be prepared for that. Okay. 
And if there's anything else um, from the commission that you think you need, as I discussed um, or referenced that report, we'll, we'll have that for you as well. Um, if there's anything else you at this time are aware of that you would like us to come back with more information on, please let us know. We'd be happy to do that. Um, and then we'll meet with you again in December and, and move from there. So we just have one more two minute comment period. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and get that started and we'll take any um, closing comments or questions before we move into staff comments and commissioner comments. commenting period for this item is now closed. I have not received any comments via email or via e-comment. Do the commission have any questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll move on to item nine, which is staff comments. Um, does staff have any comments? Yes, I just wanted to update the commissioner on the other RFP that um, is actually out right now it's to get um, a communications consultant to um, assist with outreach for um, this effort and to secure help us secure public input, working closely with staff and the commission. So that is posted right now and it's out until the 23rd of November. So, um, you know, we'll take the um, demographer RFP first with your involvement and then we'll be ready to come in after that right after that with the communications um promotion i mean the communications rfp and we uh, have a pretty robust list of communications consultants and then i sent out notification to my various communications networks to to see if people knew of others who might be interested in applying for this um so we'll be keep you updated on that as well and that's Oh, and I add one other thing for the commission. I'll be sending a press release out tomorrow, naming you all um, as um, our redistricting commission. And for now, I'm using your names and, and just a, a brief um, description of, of what you do. And then I wanted to let you know we're also developing um, the web pages, a website for the redistricting effort. And I we also will include your bios. So. Uh, with your indulgence, I'll draft something about you based on your applications, and you can all review that before we we post them to the website. So I wanted to let you know I'm working on that as well. And just so you're aware, um, we do get this question. Um, our website, you can choose a language to to view the information in. So we do have some of our documents. I, I mean, the information we have a flow of information so that people can easily translate it. And then as the process moves forward. Some of the main documents will translate into various languages as well. So, just to let you know, we do uh, work to make that as accessible for our community. 
And I'm happy to answer any questions on that one. Yes, Commissioner Fortner. Uh, yes, I just have a quick question. Um, you said in the press release, uh, you will be uh, giving a little bit of information about what we do as well. Um, I just wanted to ensure that uh, because I am active duty, that it, mm -hmm. it lists me as a veteran versus active duty. That's OK. Thank you. Thank you for that input. OK. Any more staff comments, Joe? Awesome. So we'll move on to item number 10, and that is comments from the commissioners. Any commissioners have any comments? I'll start with Commissioner Hurtado. Uh, I just want to thank the commission, other commissioners for selecting me as chair. I will try to um, serve you well. Um, I'm looking forward to working with everyone over the next, I guess, eight or nine months. Um, hopefully, we might be able to re meet in person someday, which would be very nice. But until that happens, um, I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Any more commissioner comments? Commissioner Dasla? I just figured out how to see everybody at once. I just want to apologize for my faux pas for not raising my hand and talking over people. I look forward to working with all of you. All of you. And thank you for your uh, nomination and election as uh, vice, what is it, vice chair? <laughs> Awesome, and I, I probably should have reiterated that you guys can change your view, but we'll make sure that that happens for you guys next time. Any more questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, um, it is now 6.07 p.m. and I'm adjourning this meeting to the December 17th meeting at 5.30 um, online. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>